All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we return to reinforce concrete analysis and design and talk about a cracked elastic section analysis. And what we're gonna do in this video is talk about how to apply the transformed area method to analyze a cracked elastic reinforced concrete section, really which is to find the neutral axis uh, of a reinforced concrete beam member when it's in service. And then what we're gonna do is compare the transformed area method with section equilibrium. Now to get started, we've got to ask ourselves when does a cracked elastic section behavior occur in a reinforced concrete beam? And in most cases, that is almost all the time during normal operation or service. You're just using the structure the way that it was intended. You know, if it's a bridge, cars or trucks are, are driving over the bridge. Wow, look at that. If it's an office, you know, you're sitting in your desk and, and working. What happens during normal operation and what you expect is that you expect some cracking to occur on the tension side. And this is not going to be detrimental to your structure or anything it just you might not even see it in fact but the thing that's important to know is that the materials that make up this reinforced concrete beam concrete remains in the linear elastic region and so does the reinforcement and normally what we want to do is if we're monitoring the structure or just checking it out we want to be able to analyze this and that typically requires that we use a transformed area method to locate the neutral axis depth and then from there we can do all of our other analysis or calculations so let's start by taking a look at a singly reinforced concrete beam with B a depth to steel D and an area of steel on the tension side of AS and here we're assuming the moments that are applied to this cause compression at the top tension at the bottom and in particular, let's look at the strain profile. I could tell you that this thing is cracked, elastic, and all that other business. But really, the way that we define the behavior of a reinforced concrete beam section, or any reinforced concrete section, is based on the strains that this cross section is experiencing. And one thing that we can trust, to usually, or most of the time, in reinforced concrete beam analysis is that the strain profile across the height of the cross section is linear. I have my compressive strain at the top, tensile strain at the bottom. So this top fiber is my compressive strain and this bottom fiber is my tensile strain. The point where I have zero strain is what is called my neutral axis depth or my neutral axis location and this I will call CNA and another point of interest is always the strain that the steel is experiencing on that fiber if you will this strain epsilon s that is the steel strain and so having a cracked elastic section implies some things about our strain well as we said earlier we said that all the materials are linear elastic and what that means is that the compressive strain in concrete is less than the strain associated with the proportional limit of concrete and the strain in the steel has not gone beyond its yield strain. It is still in the linear elastic region. What we do know is that this section is cracked and the cracked section implies that the tensile strain of the concrete has exceeded or reached the rupture tensile strength strain, the rupture tensile strain of the concrete epsilon r so that means this right here is cracked and that means this whole bottom all the crack once the crack starts from the bottom will propagate all the way up to where it meets this first compression right it's trying to hold that crack together and that'll be at the neutral axis and this these strains have implications on the stresses or the stress profile so here I will draw a stress profile and because everything is still linear elastic I can determine stresses by applying Hooke's law which if you might recall from McKay, it would just be stress is equal to the modulus of elasticity times a strain and so if I took every single point of strain right here and multiplied it by the modulus of elasticity of concrete I would get the stress profile and because this Hooke's law is linear and my strain my strain variation is also linear my stress variation will also be linear 
and here this would be my compressive stress at the very top I'll call that F comp you're probably used to having the profile be linear and continue through but the concrete here is cracked anything below the neutral axis axis is gone so really it's just a, a dotted line that goes straight or continues in this linear path but the one part of this cro this cross section that carries some tensile stress is the steel and in order to calculate the stress in the steel, we would multiply that strain in the steel by the modulus of elasticity of steel. Yes. So these strains have also implications on the stresses, which suggests that the compressive stress at the top of my beam is less than the stress at the proportional limit of my concrete. And my steel stress has not yielded so this is less than fy or the yield strength of steel and this is my cracked elastic section behavior now analyzing any sort of beam cross section requires knowing where this neutral axis is but because we have a composite beam uh, basically made of concrete and steel here we have to use the transformed area method or equilibrium to locate the neutral axis first before we can do any sort of analysis and the transformed area method you know requires that you convert or transform one material into an equivalent other material and what's done in reinforced concrete is to take the steel and convert it into an equivalent concrete area and so the way that that's done is that's usually the first thing you have to do and that is a equivalent would be by multiplying by the modular ratio n a s which is this e s over e c times a s where e s is the modulus of elasticity of steel and e c is the modulus of elasticity of concrete and this relationship this a equivalent equal to e s over e c times a s comes from force equilibrium which we'll show later when we compare these two methods now what we want to do is redraw the cross section as one material so i just like to extend my lines and the concrete stays concrete so this top part where i have uncracked concrete remains concrete and where i have the steel i'm going to draw i'm going to replace that steel with concrete and as you recall the modulus of elasticity of steel is much almost 10 times greater than the modulus of elasticity of concrete in some cases that would mean that this area of steel becomes a giant area of concrete or an equivalent area of concrete and so it's going to look something like this and this area is supposed to be centered around where this uh, area of steel is such that my distances from this top fiber continue to remain from the top here this is just the steel distance or the depth to steel d and this is a neutral axis step and that's it and the transformed area method is nothing more than having this funky shaped or detached looking cross section and then analyzing it just like in mechanics of material the last part is to apply the first moment of area from a selected reference or datum to calculate the neutral axis depth and once you have the neutral axis depth you can calculate the moment inertia of the crack section you know and then you can calculate stresses and uh, you can back calculate moments from strains or stresses it's up to you